this is the radical symbol. This little number up top here is what we call the index. It indicates the type of radical we have. So if this is a two, we have a square root. If this is a three, we have a cubed root. If this is a four, we have a fourth root and so on. What's underneath that radical symbol is what we call the radicand. And we would read this as the nth root of x. The principal square root of a number is the positive root. The secondary square root of a number is the negative root. So if we see this plus minus, we have five is the principal root. Five times five gives us back 25, the radicand. Negative five is the secondary root. Negative five times negative five also gives us back that radicand of positive 25. So if we see something like this, give the principal root. If we see this plus minus, then we would give both. And to quickly review some terminology from 10c, an entire radical is where the entire thing is underneath that radical sign. So we do have a coefficient of one out here. This is one times the square root of 45 but it appears as though we just have the square root of 45. We don't need to write that one down. So anytime you have a one as a coefficient, it is an entire radical. So think the entire thing is underneath that radical sign. If we have a mixed radical, you're going to see another number, a coefficient other than one out front here. So this would be 12 times the square root of three. In order for a radical to be simplified, we cannot have any fraction or decimal in the radicand. We also cannot have a radical in the denominator. We're going to get to this third one a little bit more when we look at dividing radicals. We cannot have any removable factor within the radicand either. So if we have a square root, there can be no perfect square that can be removed from that radicand. If we have a cubed root, we cannot have a perfect cube that can be removed from that radicand, etc. So what we want to do is take a look here at the first one. We have the square root of 18 and we're going to simplify this. So it might be helpful because we're going to be doing several of these to make a list on the top of your page of the perfect squares and the perfect cubes. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, etc. So we're looking for the largest number that will divide evenly into 18 that is a perfect square. In numerical order, I can see that 18 is going to be between 16 and 25. 16 will not divide evenly. 9 is going to divide evenly. So I'm going to write the square root of 18 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. These two multiplied together give us back that 18 as a radicand. I'm then going to take the square root of 9, which is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write that 3 on top. And then I'm going to multiply everything up top by everything out front, which in this case is just a 1. So we're going to have 3 times 1 is 3. And then we still have that square root of 2 as the radicand. That's an irrational number. So 3 times the square root of 2 is equivalent to the square root of 18. Now the square root of 18 is an exact value, as is 3 times the square root of 2, as opposed to their decimal equivalents. But if I use my calculator here, here and take the square root of 18. I'm going to get, it is an irrational number, so we're going to get a decimal. Now this keeps going. This is just all of the decimal places our calculator can display. And now I'm going to take my simplified value, which is going to be 3 and then times the square root of 2. Now, if we've done this correctly, we should get the same value for each. So this is equivalent to this. Now, just because you enter the two values into the calculator and get the same number, that does not necessarily mean that you are fully simplified. So you have to take a look here and say, is there any more perfect squares that will divide evenly into two? If there are, you might have an equivalent radical, but you don't have the simplified radical. So in this case, there's nothing other than one that will divide evenly into two. So I know that this is simplified and I know I did it correctly because those two decimals are the same. Let's try another one here. So now we're going to simplify the square root of 75. So I can see 75 is in between 64 and 81. So I'm going to look for the largest perfect square that will divide evenly. So 64 will not divide evenly, nor will 49 or 36. 25 will. So I can go 75 divided by 25, and that's going to give me 3. So the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, that's equal to the square root of 75. So we're now going to go ahead and take the square root of 25 five, which is five. So we're going to pull out that five. I'm going to write that on top and then I'm going to multiply everything up top by everything out front. So in this case, again, we have five times one, which is five. And then that square root of three 
there is no more perfect square that will divide evenly into three. One is going to divide evenly into three, but that won't change the value. So five times one is five. And then in that radicand, we still have the square root of three. Now in our third example here, this is a mixed radical, but it's not simplified because there is a perfect square I can divide out of that 300. There's a removable factor. So I can see that 100 will divide evenly into 300. So we can go 300 divided by 100 is three. And then we still have that two out front. I'm going to take the square root of 100, which is 10. And now there is no more perfect square other than one that will divide evenly into the square root of three. So that's going to remain in the radicand. So now I can go 10 times this two out front is going to be 20. And then that square root of three is still going to be in the radicand. In our next three examples, we have cube roots. So now we are looking for perfect cubes to pull out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and write down a list again. So one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, and you can keep going, but you can see these ones get very large very quickly. So 32 would be between 27 and 64. Well, 32 divided by 27, that's not a whole number. It's not gonna divide evenly. 32 divided by eight, now that will divide evenly. So I can go ahead and write down the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 4 will give me the cube root of 34. And it's really important that you remember that index there. The cube root of 8 is a different number than the square root of 8. So I can go ahead now and I know the cube root of 8 is 2. So we can write that up top. And then there is no more perfect cube that I can pull out of that 4. So remember, this is a cube root. This is not a square root. So we go 2 times 1 is 2. And then we still have that 4 in the radicand. Now I would pause the video and see if you can do these next two on your own and then resume the video and see what you got. All right, how did you do? So what is the largest perfect cube that we can divide evenly into 48? And hopefully you recognize that eight is gonna be the largest. So we're gonna take the cubed root of eight, which is two, and then there is no more perfect cube I can divide out of six. So we end up with two times one out front is two, and then we still have times the cubed root of six. The largest perfect cube that divides evenly into 256 is going to be 64. So I'm going to take the cubed root of 64, which is 4, and then there is no other perfect cube other than one that will divide evenly into that. So I'm going to go 4 times 1 is 4, and then times the cube root of 4 is the simplified value to the cube root of 256. If you have to simplify a really large radicand and you're not sure what the largest perfect square is, find any perfect square. So because this is an even number, I would probably try four first. If you go 6,480 in your calculator divided by four, do you get a whole number? If so, four is a perfect square that will divide evenly, and it is. So then this is what we're left with. Take the square root of four, which is two, so I'm gonna put that two on top. Now I'm gonna say, is there another perfect square that will divide evenly into this number? And again, I'm gonna try a four. Four does divide e evenly into this, leaving me with 405 take the square root of four, and again, that's gonna leave me with two. Now, this is not an even number, so I'm gonna try now, maybe let's try nine. So 405 divided by nine, that does go in evenly, I'm left with 45. So I know that if I take the square root of nine, I'm going to be left with three. And then again, I know that nine divides evenly into 45, so I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna take the square root of nine and get another three. Five, there is no more perfect square other than one that will divide evenly into five, so that is my radicand. And then I'm going to go 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, times 2 is 36, times 1 is still 36. So this is my simplified value. So if the radicand is very large, instead of necessarily trying to find the biggest one, just look for any perfect square and then keep going until there's no perfect square other than one that will divide into that radicand. Now in this very first example here, I started with an entire radical and I converted it into a mixed simplified radical. If I begin with a mixed radical, could we get it into an entire radical? So for example, let's say we start with this three times the square root of two. What would I do to get back to the square root of 18? Well, because I square rooted to pull that three out, I'm going to do the opposite operation, which is square it to put it back in. So three squared is nine times two will give me back that 18. 
mean? All right, so let's try a few of these. So we have four times the square root of three. So because it's a square root, I square rooted to pull out that four. I'm going to square it to put it back in. So I'm going to go four squared is 16. 16 times three is 48. And again, you can check this on your calculator. Is four times the square root of three equivalent to the square root of 48? And it is, so we know we have correctly turned this back into an entire radical. Now this next one here, we have a negative leading coefficient. I cannot put the negative back in here, and as soon as I go a negative times a negative, if I were to put it back in square, that becomes a positive. I've now changed the value. So I'm going to leave this negative out front, and I'm going to put the 8 back in and square it. 8 squared is 64 times 3 is going to be 192, and again, I need to leave that negative out because this is a square root. I can't put the negative in, and in order for it to be equivalent, I need to have a negative value. This is now a cubed root. So we cube rooted the 5 to pull it out. The opposite is cubing. So I'm going to put the 5 back in and cube it. 5 cubed is 125 times 2 is 250. And it's really, really important that you remember to put that index of 3 there. If you have the square root of 250, that is a different value. It should be the cubed root of 250. And the last piece we're going to review is how to compare and order radicals. So we can turn these all into their decimal equivalents, but the other way we can go about this is by actually writing them as entire radicals and then comparing the radicands. So this particular question asks us to arrange them in ascending order. So ascending is when we're going from smallest to largest. So I'm going to begin by turning each of those back into entire radicals. The square root of 19 is already an entire radical. Then I'm going to order the radicands. So I can see that my smallest radicand is that 19, followed by 24, and then 27, and my largest radicand is going to be that 32. And then we're always going to write them back into the original format that they were given to us in. So my smallest radical is the square root of 19. My second smallest is going to be that 2 times the square root of 6. So that's how I'm going to represent that final answer. Why don't you pause the video and try this last one, putting these radicals into ascending order. All right, you may have noticed there's a couple challenges here. So number one, 14 is not currently written as a radical, nor is this four times 13 to the power of one half. But remember from grade 10, we can turn any power with a rational or fraction exponent back into a radical. So remember the denominator here becomes the index of that radical. So we can have this two here, but we don't normally write a two if it's a square root, but there is a two there. And then this numerator of the fraction becomes the exponent on the radicand. So I can go ahead and put a 1 there. So now we've turned this back into a radical. And then 14, if I were to put this underneath the radical sign, what we have is just 14 squared. The squared and the square root basically cancel each other out. So 14 squared, take the square root of that, and we will get 14. So now that we've gone ahead and done this, let's simplify these up here. And then we can compare them if we're going in ascending order. So the smallest radical is going to be that 190 92 followed by 196, and then we have 200. Now this one is already an entire radical, this 202 and then 208. So I'm going to number them, and then I'm actually going to write them with the original format that we were given. So this is what we should get as our final answer. So that's a quick recap of the background skills that you need for this course that come from 10C. And then in our next lesson, we're going to begin working with the grade 11 radical concepts.